Well, hi, Brittany. Thanks for joining me today. Oh, thank you for talking with me today. Yeah. How's your day going so far? It's going good. It's been a pretty peaceful morning and um, I got to do some coaching myself this morning. So that oh, nice. <laughs> what a great way to start your day. Totally. It looks all sunny in your room right now. Yes, it is. Gotta love SoCal. It's like back to being sunny now. <laughs> I know. A few days of rain and we all freak out. Right. <laughs> well, um, I really appreciate you coming today. Um, I'll kind of just start off with a little bit of like what today will look like so that you kind of have a good insight into that. Um, so I'll start off with a quick introduction of myself. Um, I know we know each other a little bit, but I'll still go over that. Um, and then what we're going to go into is, you know, kind of what your expectations are and priorities are with this process. Um, I'll probably get some more information as far as kind of what your, your actual big dreams are, and then we'll narrow that down into your goals. Um, we do a thing that we call a wellness vision, which is essentially you kind of thinking up your dream health behaviors and what that looks like. So we'll go into that. Um, and just as an FYI, I'm going to be taking notes throughout. And these notes are just something that I have. So I can always go back when, in between our sessions. So we can kind of keep track of things. Um, they're completely confidential. So no one else sees them. But I just want to let you know. So if you hear some typing, uh, that's <laughs> you're not answering an email or anything like that. I'm just kind of taking some notes throughout. Um, do you have any questions so far? Mm -mm. Okay. So a little bit about myself, um, you know, I've been coaching for, was hard to say, unbelievable to say, but over uh, 12 years now. Um, yeah. And I started doing it when I was a master's student and I did it in a clinical setting. And then I kind of grew and started my own business. And my real passion is working with women. Um, and I love working with women so that I can really help them learn how to love themselves. And I know that's kind of cliche, but it's the, it's the reason why I do it. And um, so many women are out there experiencing the health industry in maybe a negative light. And my goal is to try to kind of fix that and help them have positive experiences with health behaviors. So that's kind of my own personal passion and coaching philosophy. Um, you know, I do have my, my PhD in this field and my master's in this field. And so I have the credentials, but really where all my experience comes from and I think how this goes so well is because I have some really awesome clients. So yeah. I'm happy that you're here and I'm part of it. And I appreciate your time today. Um, this session is a little longer than most sessions. So usually when we meet, um, it's about 60 minutes um, for the main sessions. But today might go over just a little bit. So I just want to make sure you're comfortable with that timing. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let me just start off with some expectation settings because I know a lot of times we come into health and wellness coaching and we have this kind of maybe idea of what it's like. And then we're like, whoa, that's, that's not it. So <laughs> health and wellness coaching is a relatively new field in the health field. And it um, the techniques that I primarily use, um, which is called motivational interviewing, that comes from this background of people who are working with people who have substance abuse. And so they did a ton of research on that. And what they found was that this kind of quote unquote therapy or use, this motivational interviewing can be really, really successful in helping people make sustained long-term behavior changes. So about 10 to 15 years ago, we started to use that in the health field and we've seen some really incredible benefits. Um, and so coaching and health and wellness coaching is going to be very different than many probably of the other experiences you've had in the fitness industry in that throughout our conversation today, you're going to see that you're going to be driving the conversation, right? It's very client centered. Um, you're, you're the one who's driving what's important, what we're talking about. So I'll ask a lot of questions and I'll do a lot of, I'll do the least amount of talking and you're going to be doing talking. So this is the most amount of talking you're going to have for me. <laughs> um, so like I said, it's, it's a confidential piece. I do um, keep notes, but that's just for our own records. Um, and then, you know, the coaching process is supposed to be just kind of this really safe and brave space for you to be able to open up and talk about the things that um, you really care about, particularly related to your health. So um, is there anything in particular coming in today that you want to get out of coaching? Hmm. That's a good question. Um, I think just clarity on next steps, because sometimes I can get stuck on what to do next to, okay. to pursue better health. 
Okay, so just some clarity, some specifics for what you can do next, right? Uh huh. Okay, great. So I think that this process will definitely help with that. But at the end, we'll check in and see if it has, okay? Great. Okay. So what we're about to go into is creating the wellness vision. And a, a wellness vision is this, this idea and this thought of who do we want to be, right? Who is, who is our best self, our healthier, healthiest self? And, and what does that look like? And what does it feel like? Mm -hmm doing? What are our behaviors that we're doing consistently throughout that process, right? Um, and so but as I'm going to ask you a series of questions, that's kind of going to build to that, okay? So um, I'm just kind of curious, what are you currently doing right now to support your health and well-being? Yeah, so um, with my background in exercise and just passion for that, um, I've had for years just a um, habit of doing almost daily exercise. And so it's nothing insane, but I always do about 25, 30 minutes of something, whether it be yoga, weightlifting, going out for a very slow run because I'm not very fast, <laughs> um, or like some sort of dance cardio type, type workout. So consistently doing that. Um, I'd also say consistently getting pretty good sleep, like you know, seven to eight, eight and a half hours a night. Great. Yeah. Um, and then I've, I've had kind of like a slower season. So I've had a good amount of time to just um, spend time alone, which is hard for me to do, but I think really healthy. So, okay. Yeah. Um, do you want to tell me more about that, that you said it's hard for you, but healthy? Why do you think that's healthy? Yeah, I think, um, because I really enjoy being around people and I'm an extrovert that um, many times if I'm going too much with that, it fills me up typically, but it takes me a little while to notice that I haven't had any time just to myself. Um, and because I am kind of people oriented, um, sometimes I can, and empathetic, sometimes I can lose a little bit of, well, what do I think about that? Or, what, you know, what are my needs in that moment or things like that. So I can kind of get lost in others' opinions and needs <laughs> as opposed to mine. Sure. Yeah. So it sounds like by nature of being an extrovert and wanting to be around people in your normal busy daily life, you kind of get lost in that and other people's needs and, and priorities. And because it sounds like you're a giver too. And that this, this time of the year, you found yourself having a little bit more time of being alone. So it almost kind of forced that time for you. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And I recognize that I, I still want a majority of people time, but yeah. um, having that alone time and knowing that it's important, I think makes me want to make sure I carve that out when I have busier seasons. Yeah. That's really great to notice that yourself to right to see what you, where you want to go with it yeah yeah absolutely good okay so what elements of your life are you just feeling the best about right now mm. um I love the job that I get to do <laughs> so wellness coaching and then getting to teach a class um up at Pepperdine as well um so I think career wise, I'm super pleased <laughs> and, and I feel grateful for that because I know that hasn't always been the case for me and isn't always the case for everybody. Yeah. So that's wonderful. Um, I'm married to the best person that I know. So that feels really like awesome. <laughs> um, he makes me laugh and challenges me and um, we just enjoy being active together and um, going on adventures together and stuff like that. Um, and I've just been really blessed. I've moved around a lot and have been blessed with making really good friends in all those places. So even though it's hard to live far away from these good mm -hmm. friends, I, um, we still all try and keep up with each other. And so I'm just really grateful for these like kind of powerhouse women that I get to be friends with. That sounds like a really nice life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love hearing that. That's really, really great. Thank you. 
do you want to highlight maybe, and let's specifically think about your health. And just to be clear mm -hmm. about health, we're thinking about health in a very broad, very holistic fashion, right? So sometimes what the fitness industry does is tell us that health is two things, nutrition and physical activity. Totally. Already hearing you talk about things like your relationships and things like sleep, because it's really bigger picture, right? It's mm -hmm. person. So thinking about that, can you tell me some success stories that you've had uh, recently with your health? Ooh, let's see. Um, I feel like a, a success story in the sense, like kind of thinking about like the fitness industry, how you've mentioned, mm -hmm. um, a lot of the stories that at least I hear coming out of it are you have to go hard all the time with your, mm -hmm. your exercise for it to count, for it mm -hmm. to matter. Um, and I just feel like I'm in like exercise has just become this, like, this is how I'm able to meet the rest of life's demands well. And so um, I think a success story is just kind of over those years of exercise, just coming to a place of like, even if I don't have a specific goal I'm pursuing, just the fact that I'm doing it to um, as like a life sustainer <laughs> sort of thing mm -hmm. feels like really healthy. Cause I know there will be times where I, I do have a goal that I want to pursue and that can fluctuate. But I think that right now it just feels like it's in this really life-giving space, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Yeah. I love that term life-giving. <laughs> um, it sounds like you're a really good relationship with physical activity, mm -hmm. right? And they're in a good spot with that. And that's, that's really wonderful to hear. Um, what, what do you think you, what, I, I want to get at some of your strengths that you mm -hmm. have. Um, and I know you've probably all done some strength finders tests before, totally. <laughs> right? <laughs> that tell you that, but just innately and thinking about who you are, mm. you think what qualities are you just the most proud of about yourself? Mm. Um, hmm. yeah, it's a good question. I think, um, meeting a lot of things with like a joyful attitude. I think, um, that's something that, um, though you have to cultivate, like, I, I do think it also kind of comes a little more naturally to me. Okay. Um, and I think that having that positive attitude can really, um, has really served me well, um, but can also just help overcome a lot of challenges that life throws your way. And so, kind of figuring out like, um, is a Marie Forleo that says everything is figure outable. So like kind of, I think it helps me cultivate that mindset. Um, sure. Um, I think, uh, just, um, caring a lot about people, um, is a, a strength I'm proud of just wanting the best for them, wanting to, um, be a part of them reaching that, um, whether it's like family or coaching clients or students, like, or friends, you know, it's just, mm -hmm. um, I love like being witness to them reaching their full potential. Um, so I think just like really caring about other people's flourishing, including myself, but yeah. 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 And that certainly aligns with what you said in the beginning too, right. Of like kind of wanting to be around other people and, and having an innate need to wanting to help. Yes. <laughs> okay. So two of the strengths I'm hearing from you so far, are kind of this, this innate positive, joyful attitude that, um, that, you know, you might naturally have, but also you kind of foster that yourself. Right. And that's kind of helped you, um, get through some things and which is really a great, you know, natural thing to have, mm -hmm. have this, wanting to help people. Um, and that being, it seems like a common thread throughout all of the avenues of your life, right? Yeah. <laughs> Professional. Can you think of any other major strengths that you think, um, maybe even think about this, like think about what has gotten you through some things in the past, you know? Yeah. Um, I would definitely say, well, I guess I don't know if it's like a strength or not, but my faith for sure. Mm -hmm. And so just like, um, that belief that I'm not alone and there's that higher, 
um, bigger power that I can rely on. So that's one. Um, and I think just, uh, I guess the part that I've played in making connections with friends and family. And so then again, kind of knowing that mm -hmm. when I hit hard times that I have those people, whether they live next to me or not, um, mm -hmm. that I can call on them and they'll be there for me. Um, so I think, and I know it's a two-way street, you know, so yeah. that means that I have been there for them in the past and they know they can do the same. So, yeah. That's really great. We seem to have a very good social network, right? Strong social network around you. That's what I'm hearing so far. Yeah, absolutely. And that's incredibly important, um, you know, as you know, just for, for our life, but also for um, our goals and health behaviors and whatnot. So. Definitely. So what right now, thinking about your health and well-being, what do you think is the most important thing to you right now today? Hmm. I guess like important in like, uh, like for future or for um, we can even just say we could, if I see what you're saying, um, meaning right now versus next week or yeah. 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 Um, how about we just think about it from both, right? Like it could be like what's currently the most important, but maybe what's on your brain for mm -hmm. the future. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, um, currently something I've been thinking about, I mean, the exercise is going well, but the nutrition piece is another story. And so, um, I kind of want to, end up with that similar kind of like good relationship with the food as I have with the exercise. So I want that to be a little more balanced. Okay. So I'd say that currently. Um, and then more future, I think one of the reasons that exercise is so beneficial is that um, like I have scoliosis. And so I, I'm just very aware that now that I'm in my mid thirties <laughs> that um our bodies do kind of grow older and degenerate and I want to be active as long as possible. So I just don't, I want to, I don't want to be limited by that. So I want to keep mm -hmm. doing that exercise as much as possible so that I can slow that decline. A little bit. Yeah. yeah. And then if you were going to take that same perspective of, of aging with nutrition, how do you feel about that? Mm. Well, I think the same thing. I mean, just even noticing, um, like in my folks who are, who eat pretty decently well for not being necessarily really in this field or anything like uh -huh. that. Um, and just seeing how much vitality they have in their mid sixties. Mm -hmm. And, um, so wanting to have that. So it also kind of ties to the future of wanting to do that. But I think also, um, presently I notice how much it affects my energy, mm. which of course, like then affects how good of a job I can do, how well I can connect with people. It's all connected. So, right. yeah. So let's, let's dive a little bit more into that. So seeing, it sounds like physical activity, that piece is you feel really good. You have that strong relationship with it right now. You see how it's connected to the future. So you have that kind of motivator that exists there. Yeah. Sounds like that motivator exists with nutrition, but it also sounds like you're not as um, satisfied maybe with where you are on your relationship with, with nutrition. Can you speak a little bit more to that? Yeah. So I think um, I, I definitely, um, again, have been, blessed to feel like I haven't had like a poor relationship with food, mm -hmm. um, or things like that. And, and very much a, an intuitive eater anyway, mm -hmm. okay. but I also am a big celebrator. I love, I mean, this could be like where the strength kind of goes wrong. Like <laughs> the joyfulness can also be like, everything is a celebration or should be. And so I, and food is a part of that mm -hmm. and drinks are a part of that. And so, um, I think what I'd like to see is obviously not eliminating that because I think that your, your quality of life <laughs> is also wrapped up in that. 
Um, but maybe not being in such a like, everything's a celebration every single day feeling. And it's not necessarily every single day, but most days. And kind of toning that down to where there's like, there are special times and special occasions and times to bring celebration in, but my eating doesn't reflect that every day is Thanksgiving, <laughs> you know? <laughs> sure. Yeah, I understand that. Um, okay. So can you think of a recent example to where you maybe thought back and thought, oh yeah, that wasn't a celebration or I shouldn't have, I wish I would have done something different. Mm, yeah. Yeah, I think, um, <clears throat> hmm. I'm trying to think, that's a great question. <laughs> um, yeah, I think even just like within the past couple of weeks, like um, treating dinner time where my husband and um, his brother lives with us now. And so like where all three of us are at home, which actually happens every night for dinner <laughs> and thinking like, Oh, I should make cookies for us. And I should also make sure that we've got some, you know, spiced wine because it's the Christmas season. You know? <laughs> and so doing that where maybe one of those things would have been fine or just recognizing like, Hey, let's save that for, um, for instance, last night we made it a point to, celebrate Christmas together because our brother-in-law is going to leave tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And so like he opened our gift and mm -hmm. you know, that would have been more of like, Hey, this makes sense as a celebration mm -hmm. time. Whereas just a random night of the week isn't. And again, that can happen sometimes. But not yeah. all the time. How, why do you think you, you've been doing that recently? Mm, good question. Um, I think it feels like a way that I can contribute because I do know that um, I bring the joy and I value celebration. Um, so it's kind of like, this is what I contribute to our little family. Um, and I also know my husband's been working so hard that, and this isn't anything he's asked for, but it's a way that I think of like, oh, let me make it take a load off of you even when I can't take any work off of you, you know? So kind of doing that as well. And it's interesting going back to this, the beginning of like describing yourself, right? And like one of the things that who you are is that giver mm -hmm. wanting to do that. And it really ties into to this piece of, seeing your husband and in, in maybe a stressful time of year and wanting to help him out. Right. And yeah. it, you're using your words, taking a load off, right. Yeah. By doing this. Um, is there any other thing, reason you think that you think you you've been doing this recently? So I know it's a way to contribute, maybe helping your, your husband and your little family there, but any other reason? You think? Yeah. Um, I think honestly, again, cause I'm in a season of being, in so much alone time, I think it's like something to do. <laughs> so like making cookies or making this, um, these fun holiday drinks or things like that. It's almost like it, it, I don't know if distractions, the right word, but maybe of, of like, Oh, well, this is something I can do. And I know it will contribute to future mm -hmm. time that I spend with people. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Well, I really appreciate you digging in a little bit to that because I think that's always, those are those moments where we just kind of do things and we don't stop and think about like, why am I doing this? Right. <laughs> um, so I think that in itself is probably um, pretty beneficial, that process. So, yeah. so it sounds like, and I, I want to make sure this is clear, so provide me a little clarity. It sounds like moving forward, as far as your well vision, mm -hmm. maybe is the most the biggest piece of where you want to, what you might want to change. Is that yes, correct? I would agree. Yeah. Okay. So what do you think is the driving force before, behind wanting to change right now? Hmm. Honestly, coaching and going through um, the certification process, they do a really good job of reminding you that 
um, you should walk the talk. Mm -hmm. And so I think I know that, but it's good to be reminded. Mm -hmm. And I think um, it becomes more pressing when it's, I'm about to go after certification and I'm currently seeing some clients and I learn from the clients too, when they're pursuing goals and it kind of inspires me to do stuff too. (laughs) Yeah. Always learning, right? Yeah. (laughs) Okay. So the driving force is that you're kind of going through the certification process and you're in it, right? You have the clients who are kind of reminding you as well, but then also your certification, the certifying body is telling you, Hey, you got to walk the talk and Mm -hmm. it's a reminder. So it's kind of fresh on the brain. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, now kind of digging a little bit deeper into this vision, what are the most important elements to your vision? So, and I always like to think of this, if you're a visual person of, if it's a year from now, what is it, what does it look like? Paint me a picture. What does it feel like? What are you doing? You know? Yeah. I think the, the exercise is similar, like near daily, something that just feels good in my body. Um, I think that a majority of the time I'm eating foods that fuel my body for energy um, with, you know, the, the minority of the time having the celebrating foods and, and having like a, a better balance of, of that. Mm-hmm. Um, I think because of that, then I would just feel really, really energized. My skin would be clear. Um, I would feel strong um, and able to be really present, whoever I'm talking with, whether it be a coaching client or a student or friend or family. And you'd be more present because of what you said earlier, right? Of having more energy, right? Is that okay? Definitely. And not like that kind of brain fog that can come with certain foods and drinks and stuff. Mm-hmm. So you feel that connection between the food and your energy levels and right all of that. Definitely. Okay. So one question I have um, is, is this something that you, you typically experience? Cause you use the word seasonal. Is this something that is truly a seasonal feeling, meaning this time of the holiday season, mm-hmm. relatively new thing for this particular season of your life? Ooh, that's a great question. And that, I'm glad you asked because it made me think of, yes. So it hasn't just been this particular holiday season. It's been like since we moved to California because Mm -hmm. we've had such a steady stream of guests coming to visit us. Mm -hmm. And so of course, you know, as, as I would want to, if I were them, they want to go out and experience things. And so we try and do that with them too. So a lot more eating out than I'm typically used to, which kind of keeps me in that like, holiday celebration zone, you know? So then when I'm just home, it's like, well, I want to make this a celebration too. I haven't been able to kind of just have normal life for long Mm -hmm. enough. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. 100%. Yeah. It sounds like it's like this eternal vacation, right? Yeah. (laughs) celebratory vacation that you're totally it's kind of exhausting but awesome at the same time (laughs) yeah I can hear that from you a little bit yeah (laughs) Yeah, absolutely okay so um I think that's a good clarity piece right to kind of know and understand so it seems like this has been going on for the last what two years ish right yeah (laughs) so so now it's become more of a normal behavior that you're trying to then figure out how to maybe potentially change a little right correct yep okay so now let's, let's think about maybe some positive experiences with this vision. So again, this vision being almost daily, um, you're, you're, you're focusing on, I know you said you eat primarily healthy, right? But it's no longer this normal daily thing of celebration, right? You feel good in what you're putting in your body. You're feeling energy, energized, and you're not having that fog. Mm-hmm. Can you tell me maybe some of your recent experiences or most recent experiences of feeling that way with food? Yeah. Um, I think one was when um, I was at Colorado State and um, crazy enough leading um, adult fitness, and <laughs> um, which is probably one of the most insane times of life, I think. Um, but... And, and so I, I guess it wasn't a great situation because I wasn't like 
cooking as much as I do now. So that piece has gotten much better, but it was great because even though I was eating on the run a lot, it was all stuff that just felt really good in my body. And I think energized me for that kind of, you know, crazy job and teaching schedule. Okay. And what kind of, so if I, I just want to clarify, so it was mostly because you're still eating relatively healthy now, it was mostly the absence of those celebratory meals and snacks and treats. Mm -hmm. Is that? Yep. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that that time in particular, you weren't having those celebratory meals and snacks and things like that? Mm. Maybe I didn't have time. <laughs> um, yeah. Cause I know I did it some, but not, not a ton. Maybe, um, you know, I definitely had like my fill of people. Like it was the nature of that job. Mm -hmm. Um, my husband and I were dating about to get engaged and married. Um, so we spent a lot of time together and still had a lot of my grad school friends in town. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think I was just like really full in that way, if that makes sense. Yeah, I think that's a good tie, right? Is noticing that not only was it maybe just literally not having the time to do it, but the tie to the fact that you already were spending all this time with people that you loved and cared for. And so there maybe wasn't a need to have those celebratory meals because it was happening innately without that, right? Yes. It's almost like it felt right. like the, just the connection with people felt like the celebration. So I didn't necessarily need anything else to make a celebration out of it. <laughs> so would you say that currently a lot of the connection that you have with people, you maybe feel that you need to, for some, you, for some reason you need to celebrate? It's mm, a good question. I think um, though I have an awesome social network who doesn't live here, I'm still working on creating one here. Okay. And so having that friend time face to face is kind of what I'm missing out on. I'm getting it. It's like the slow churn of building those relationships, but mm -hmm. it's not to the place of like, oh, these are best friends for life. You know? <laughs> so then it feels like those moments you really have to make special. Yeah, definitely. Um, I appreciate you sharing that too. Um, mm -hmm. It sounds like you have a, thinking about that past experience really kind of maybe highlighted some of that. Yeah. And I never thought about it that way. So thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, so now let's think about your strengths, right? That's why I always love to think about your strengths. What strengths do you think you can draw on right now um, to help you from where you are now to where you want to be? So if you can imagine and noting very clearly that your gap, what we call about this gap, right? Your gap where you are now to where you want to be is very small. So I just, I want to make sure we're <laughs> <laughs> and not to diminish it, yeah. right? But, and it's still very, very important. But what do you think, what strengths you have can get you to that, that point? Mm -hmm. um, I definitely think I do have a strength of connecting with people. And so I think that I can make those relationships mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. um, I think it just takes... Um, kind of reminding myself about, hey, you've done this in the past. I've moved a lot. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. um, so recognizing that and even recognizing, I had a friend tell me recently that who moves a lot that she has learned that each place is different. And so you can't go mm -hmm. into it thinking like, oh, it's going to be exactly the same as this last place because it has different people, different things mm -hmm. to do, you know. So I think recognizing too that, these are different people is a different place, but I can still use my strength of connecting to others. Mm -hmm. um, and then I also, from the food avenue, I don't know if it's enough to say like that will trickle down to the food. Sure. Spot. Um, strengths for that. I mean, a strength is that I, I know I've kind of done the work to know what, energizes my body. Um, so I know what kinds of foods I should be putting into it if I want to feel the most energized. Okay. Yeah. What, 
what type of foods, how, how is it different from what you're currently doing with those celebratory meals to where maybe those foods that you have in your brain that are energizing foods? Mm, yeah. Um, I think like seeing, cause I always want something sweet at the end of the day. So I think finding more of like the fruits and things of that nature that are sweet instead of, um, you know, like the cookies and the M&Ms and things of that nature. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so almost like replacing some of the sweet things with things that also can, contri- even though they have sugar that have other benefits to them. Sure. Sure. Okay. So not completely removing the behavior, which I think is smart, but replacing it with. Uh, you got it. Okay. I mean, I love that because you're kind of going down a little bit dig- deeper and we'll get there <laughs> into a <laughs> I think it's great. Yeah. Um, okay. So it sounds like a strength of connecting people can, can help just because you, you know, you can do that and you're kind of fostering some of those relationships right now and talking to other friends who've done it in the past and moved around a lot. Just, I think maybe being, being open and kind to yourself that it might take it yeah. longer. It might be different than in the past. Right. Totally. <laughs> and, but then also sounds like that might not necessarily, you, you don't necessarily see that link to the nutrition. So, um, but then you, so you want to kind of set some more specific things with the nutrition, right? I think so. And I think maybe it's, cause I know I said I, I couldn't see that link, but I, I think I do from okay. just the questions you were asking, but I think it feels slower to me than I want the okay. nutrition change to be. <laughs> cause you never know how long it'll take to make like those really close friendships. Yes. What are you currently doing to build those? Um, so we have a church that we go to and it's nice and small one. So it's easier to meet people because they know you're new. <laughs> yes. um, and then with that church, I have like a, a few gals that I get to meet with weekly. Um, and it's nice cause we're all in different life stages. Mm-hmm. Um, so kind of, getting to know them. And then, um, there's also kind of like a larger group that I meet with almost weekly of like guys and gals from that group as well. Oh, great. Okay. And then there are a couple of gals that I met at a free Lululemon workout class. <laughs> so oh, that was fun. Yeah. Um, so just trying to get together with them when I can. Love it. So I need people who have shared interests and that as you, right? Yes. Uh-huh. And you're right. Those processes, those can take some time to cultivate those relationships, but I'm glad that you can see the link between that and, and even the nutrition, right? Your, your big vision. Yeah. Okay. So thinking about your well vision, really being, um, having this, what it sounds like is this balanced, um, and good relationship with physical activity and nutrition, right? But it sounds like the physical activity is there. And really the focus is going to be as far as behavior change on nutrition. Mm-hmm. Um, and it sounds like you have um, some, you can identify your strengths as far as how it relates to that. What, what support systems do you think you have around you that can help you with that? And that could be um, something as simple as like your relationships around you, but it also could be things in your environments, um, you know, resources that you have around you kind of think of a big picture. Yeah. Um, I definitely think, uh, the food that we bring into the house and I, um, because it's been such a busy season for my husband and the primary grocery shopper. Okay. And so I control that. <laughs> okay. So I recognize that if it's not in the house, it's not a problem. Um, but if it is, and I'm the one who brought it in, then most likely I'm going to be the one who eats it. And my husband and brother-in-law too, potentially, but for sure me. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Uh. So earlier you mentioned the going out with friends because friends are often like coming and visiting. And so everything seems like a solid. Um, so it sounded like eating out was a piece of that. Would you think that's still the case or is it primarily just the foods that you're buying and bringing into the house? Mm, both (laughs) probably equally. Um, we just haven't had a guest here in a couple of months. And so I think that's maybe a little more on my brain, but I know they're coming. (laughs) And so, yeah, the eating out piece is, 
is definitely a piece of that too. Like I'd love to, you know, have the time for, Oh, I'm going to eat something to try something new or whatever. But also if I'm recognizing we're having a lot of people choosing things that will fuel me better rather than sure. just be celebratory only. Okay. Um, is it okay? Do you mind if I highlight something? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so I love that you brought up the fact that you're the primary grocery shopper, right? And that you're, so you kind of control what's bringing into the house, which certainly that is like an environmental piece, right? But um, the first thing you brought up was a support structure that's based within you. So I would love to explore some support structures that um, don't yes. <laughs> rely on maybe um, things around you. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, so definitely my husband is um, probably one of the most self-disciplined people I know since he's a runner. Okay. Um, <laughs> and so all it would take would be to say, hey, I would like you to kind of help keep me accountable, give me some ideas. Uh, he's also very creative. So he's a really good resource and wants to see me flourish and feel my best. Okay. Um, so he's like the immediate one cause he lives with me. Um, sure. but I also, you know, have friends in, in this field who I can reach out to as well and just say, Hey, I, I love ideas. I love what works for you guys. What, sure. um, even if you checked in with me, like all sorts of accountability, I think yeah. is available okay. for me. Awesome. So your husband is a great resource because he lives in there. He wants the best for you. He's also very self-disciplined, right? And has a health focus, right? Mm -hmm. But also sounds like you have some good networks as far as friends and whatnot who can kind of help you. Um, maybe if you have questions about things, but also just keep you accountable and, and things like that, right? Yeah, definitely. Have you had any of these conversations about this with friends, um, family, or even your husband? A little, but not much. I, I'd say um, not really with friends yet. Um, and a little with even kind of noticing like the amount of caffeine I intake. Mm -hmm. So my husband and I kind of working on transitioning to some decaf coffee and stuff like that. So you've had some nutrition related conversation with your husband. Mm -hmm caffeine. Um, tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah. So, um, I think both of us just kind of realized that we'd gotten to the point of, of having too much and, you know, a little is fine, but I think just recognizing that not only is it daily, but it's a lot daily for both mm -hmm. of us. Mm -hmm. And so, um, what it's done is it's, um, kind of been pretty funny because he'll wake up in the morning and make the coffee and, not tell me what it is <laughs> and oh. so been, like some days where I'm like man I was just so tired <laughs> and he's like yes. oh I put decaf in there <laughs> so all decaf yeah yeah and so okay. that might not be like the best route to go maybe a half calf would be better but <laughs> <laughs> but it's been like a pretty funny challenge like for both of us of him like sure. will she be able to tell <laughs> what it is? yeah and then I think me realizing, oh, it actually makes a difference if it is all yeah. decaf. That's yeah. a more of a sign of like, this is something we should change up a little bit. Yeah. How have you been feeling with that? Well, <laughs> we did that for a while and then hit like a really busy season. So it's been okay. like again. So, okay. Yeah. Back to it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Um, is that something that you might want to explore later when we go into some changes nutritionally and things Absolutely, like that? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if we're thinking about our well, your well vision and, and where you want to be and how you want to feel with nutrition, what do you think might be some challenges that might get into your way? Mm. Yeah, I think just the, well, the fact that I like almost all food, <laughs> um, so yeah, I think that's a challenge and a good thing probably, but sure. Um, I think because of the connection piece, if others are, um, like if my husband or brother-in-law decides like, Oh, I'm going to open up a beer. And I had already previously decided I wasn't, it's really mm -hmm. hard for me to continue with that decision because 
it feels like a celebration that I don't want to miss out on with people. Mm -hmm. I think that piece. Um, and so then because of that, when we do have guests and we go out, um, especially if it's like a new place I haven't gone to, mm -hmm. it's kind of more fun to try other things. So again, I think that like connection and celebration, two sides of the coin. Yeah. Can, can hinder my goals a little bit too. Yeah. Yeah. That, I think that's a really good, honest evaluation of some of the challenges that might come up. Right. Do you see a world where you can still engage in these connections and these moments with people while at the same time having, doing less of the, the sweets and the, um, you know, the, what you were calling unhealthy, quote unquote, unhealthy foods on a frequent basis. Do you, do you think they can coincide? I do. I think it just takes a little more intention and thought okay. part. Um, because I've done it before okay. where I've chosen, like I, I can think of some times where I've gone out to eat and I've chosen what felt, what I knew would feel better energy wise in my body. And mm -hmm. I haven't felt like I missed out. And I um, also can, if I can make that connection more often in my brain of like, if I have energy, I can actually connect with people better and be present with them. Um, you know, recognizing that, hey, food can be a connection and the fun, you know, foods and stuff like that can be a connection. But it can also detract from connection because I feel lethargic or yeah. I don't feel like I can be as present as I otherwise could. I think that's incredibly important connection that you, not to use that word too much, but that you just, <laughs> between those two things. Yeah. And it's nice that you can think back to a time where you have done that and, and gone out and still were able to have those moments with people and connect with them and have to celebrate, right? But mm -hmm choose the choices for food that made you feel more energized so that you could have more of that connection, right? Yeah, absolutely. Any other challenges that you can think about that might come up that you anticipate? Mm. Um, I mean, the holidays, so we'll be traveling for that. Um, mm -hmm. And so the potential of, I think we'll be able to purchase a lot of our own groceries and stuff okay. just in because we'll be staying with my brother and they just had a new baby. So we're going to be kind of on our own in that sense, yeah. which is a good thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, anytime with traveling plus holiday, I think we'll make, make it at least for this next couple of weeks a little more difficult. I think that's completely understandable, right? And we all can kind of understand the, the unique uh, uniqueness of the holiday season that does right to um our, how we feel and our behaviors and what we're around and our environment right all of that yeah. is um and so i think that's that's important to kind of consider as you're as you're thinking about the changes that you potentially want to make right yeah so what i would love to do is let's let's kind of um summarize and reflect on the vision and then if it's okay with you i'm going to ask that you restate that for yourself and kind of commit to that. And then what we'll do from there is we're going to go into some specific um, kind of big picture three month goals. Mm -hmm. And then we have one or two, I mean, depending on what you need and want um, smaller kind of weekly goals. Okay. Kind of support that vision. Awesome. So what I'm hearing from you for your vision is that, you know, big picture, what you want to feel is energized and that because you're energized, you're able to connect to those ones, those loved ones around you mm -hmm. and that you're able to still have those moments of cele celebration, mm -hmm. but in those moments, not really compromise maybe the food choices that you're making so that you can continue to have that connection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, and I know that sounds silly, but um, would you mind kind of restating it in your own words, maybe? No. Um, so my vision is to um, have energy to make good connections with people and, uh, to have not only my exercise, but my, um, food choices and nutrition choices support the ability to be present and make those connections. I love it.
Sorry, I'm just typing away here. <laughs> oh, that's great. Thank you. <laughs> I think that's, I really like your, your choice of words. Um, how do you feel about committing to this? I feel good. I think it's something I've been thinking about, but it's nice to talk about it and kind of see the line between some of these things. <laughs> sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so let's, let's kind of dig into now, you know, having this as our, our, our ultimate vision, right? Yeah. Let's, let's dive into this kind of three month goal. Okay. So the, the nature of setting these goals is to really help you because if we were to just to focus on the vision, sometimes I can be just like, okay, what's next, right? Yeah. <laughs> so the, the idea behind these three month goals is that you have maybe a, a, a slightly smaller, but still bigger picture of where you want to be. And then from there, we're going to build these smaller weekly goals that can be a nice check-in point for you to know how to get to those three-month goals. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. So what are some actions, and you kind of described a few, right? But what are some actions that you think you could take, behavioral changes, to help support your well vision? Yeah. Um, I definitely think the coffee piece. So okay. transitioning to... Um, decaf more often for sure okay um other actions um i think it's a good question i think um <laughs> yeah even having that conversation more with my husband and um possibly like a friend or two of okay. um yeah of Hey, I'm trying to kind of tweak this a little bit. What would that look like? And mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Think what else? Um, and then I, yeah, I don't know if it would be helpful. This is just a thought of like kind of looking ahead and seeing the times that are more celebratory and knowing that, Hey, I've got those to look forward to you. So then I know like, okay, but for these days I'm going to fuel my body. Well, you know, mm -hmm. so just to clarify, thinking ahead into the future and, and having a good understanding of those events that you really want to celebrate. Yeah. Right. So that you don't um, celebrate on the other days that maybe aren't what you, think our celebration got it exactly yes she okay. when you want to value or when you want to kind of focus in on the celebrations okay yeah. like almost kind of calendar or something I don't yeah know. basically like okay what's coming up where it's gonna be like oh this is fun and i want to enjoy whatever food and drink and stuff like that or i want to make it for that or you know sure okay that definitely makes sense any other actions you think for that that will help with your vision? Yeah. Um, I think finding a way to remind myself that, that I really do value that connection with people and that my, so my energy is important mm -hmm. because I, again, I know that, but it's so like far tucked away in my brain that, I don't remember it in the moment. <laughs> yeah, I think that can be hard, right? To yeah. remember that, right? Because you get it, but then in that moment when everything's happening, it can be hard to remember that. For sure. Definitely understand that. Okay. Okay. So it sounds like you have a few different actions here for this three month goal. So transitioning to decaf more often, having this conversation with your husband and friends thinking through the future of when you really want to celebrate things, like what are the big things that are going to happen? Mm -hmm. Maybe finding a way to remember how important that energy is to you actually being able to people. Yes. Okay. So let's, if you, one of the things that happens with these three month goals is, and even any kind of goals, it's usually a good idea to have a few that are really solid and you feel comfortable about um, where you're concentrating on those and able to kind of drive forward with your vision with those specific goals. So thinking now about your three month goal, what would be a few that you really are connected to and you think might really help you pursue your vision? Yeah, I think, um, 
the coffee. So making that um, transition or at least like a more consistent <laughs> transition. Okay. So less, de less uh, caffeine. Yes. Yeah. And any other ones for their three month goal? I think that last one um, of just finding a way to remind myself of what my actual value is. <laughs> okay. In that um, wanting to connect with people. Okay. Now let's, let's, if you're okay with it, take these and try to make them um, a little bit more tailored and specific. And so, um, I'm sure you've heard of the acronym SMART goals before. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, so we're going to set um, some SMART goals right now. Um, and if you wouldn't mind um, kind of trying to take each one of those, the coffee and then the, and remembering how energy can help with your connection, mm -hmm. taking both of those and kind of thinking through a way to make them SMART goals. Okay. So um, with the coffee... Remembering that this is your three month goal, That's right? True, your, yeah. your time frame is bigger for this one. Yes. Okay. So I think, um, yeah, I think, I don't know. What do you suggest? That's an interesting question. <laughs> so what do you, what, have you set any goals in the past about uh, coffee? I haven't. Not like, not like specifically. Mm -mm. Okay. How about, have you set any goals specifically or how about this? Do you know anything about what you would like, how much caffeine you'd like to take in every day? Yeah. Good question. Um, I think ideally, I think like even longer term picture, mm -hmm. I'd love to transition to drinking more tea than coffee, but that's okay. like, I feel like far away. In the okay. Future. And so I think like three month goals, then um, I'd love to say like mm, half the time I'm drinking decaf. Okay. So there doesn't sound like there's a, a milligram amount mm -hmm. of pain that you're like trying to focus in on. Mm -hmm currently what you're currently doing and then changing that right yeah, exactly yeah okay so you said um drinking half of the amount yeah so i guess like replacing half of what i'm currently drinking with decaf and could you be a little bit more specific as far as what that looks like what is half represent Great question. Yeah. Um, I think, so I, I think maybe even having like a time of day could be really helpful because I kind of drink coffee throughout the day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, until like about, I don't know, late afternoon. And so I think almost, um, that by let's say noon, I've, it's no more caffeine. It's if I'm going to drink something, it's decaf. Okay. Okay. So now it sounds like um, by 12 p.m., if you're going to drink any drink liquids, it's mm -hmm. there won't be any caffeine. Right. So um, what does the before 12 look like? What's in the, like a, for you, an okay amount? How many cups of coffee? Mm, I think what I'm currently doing is probably about two cups of coffee at home. And then I usually go to a coffee shop to do work. Yes. <laughs> so probably like three cups of coffee. So in a three month period, mm -hmm. what would be, if I'm understanding this correctly, is that before 12 PM kind of having three cups of coffee in that time period. And then after 12 PM, if you're going to have any kind of other liquids, making sure there's just no cap. Am I understanding that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. How does that goal feel to you? It feels good. It feels like 
doable and I can already sense like what I'll want to keep doing in the future, but I think that's a good thing, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think that's good to kind of know where you want to go from here. And then what we're going to do next is kind of think through what you'll do smaller to get to that point. Yes. Yeah. And it feels doable, which is good okay. <laughs> instead of like a big okay. overhaul of my life. <laughs> that's important, right? We yeah. know that's really important with goal setting. So I appreciate that. Okay, so now let's, um, if you're okay with it, let's go on and move to this, the second goal, which I think it might seem a little bit more abstract to you based on how you were saying it. It's like finding, finding a way, right? Yeah. <laughs> Remind yourself of the actual value of, of this, like the energy will help you with connection. Yeah. So what would be three months, what would be a goal you'd want to meet for that? I think, hmm. well, I can, I can see, um, cause again, with holiday time, it's going to be a lot of family mm -hmm. that I want to connect with. Mm -hmm. Um, and so just recognizing that I guess in three months, I want to look back and feel like I had the energy. I did what I could <laughs> to make myself available for those connections and really present during that time. I don't know if that answered the question at all. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and this, th these kind of goals are really hard to make into SMART goals, you yeah. know, because of the nature of, of what you're talking about. But yeah. I still think it's important to kind of be as specific and measurable as possible because it's, it's good to, to think through that. So yeah. when you say you want to look back and feel like you could be available and present during those times, how will you quantify that? Mm, yeah, I think um, feeling like a major. Uh, I, think. <laughs> I, know that, I know this can be a difficult question to answer, so feel free to take some time to think about it. I think um, feeling as though during the days. Um, I've eaten like for breakfast, lunch, any snacking in between. Um, I've really eaten things that fuel my body because then that fuels me for the day of being with family. And then if I do eat some celebratory things, it's more in the evening, like okay. shortly before going to bed because that's, so I still get both, you know, the celebration, but I haven't taken away from the connection and the, the energy to have that connection mm -hmm. with my family. But then I also majority of the time I'm still eating food that fuels me well. Okay. And this sounds like a specific thing during the holiday season, right? Cause I yeah. think that's important. Um, because after the holiday season, since it's a three month thing, you're going to be pushing into February. So I wonder if that will look a little different. I think it will for sure. Um, I think we're planning on probably having um, a guest or two in January, February. So I okay. think kind of the same thing for okay. the times that they're here, but that's still not very many days. Um, but yeah, I think it's almost like a nice rule of thumb for like the holidays or having people mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. when I'm maybe not cooking at home all the time or mm -hmm. <laughs> stuff like that. Um, okay. Yeah, but for the rest of the time. <laughs> so can I ask a clarifying question? Absolutely. So it sounds like in three months, you want to um, look back and feel that you did everything that you could. And what that looks like is that during the days, so basically breakfast until dinner or whatever, mm -hmm. you are, you're eating the foods that fuel you, that you know are going to help you make those you know, energized connections, right? In the evenings, that's where you're going to, you know, have your, allow yourself some grace and be able to connect with family via food and treats and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, is this a daily thing that you feel comfortable doing? Is this a, you know, a few times a week thing? Or just, you understand what I'm saying? Is it every day that you'd be comfortable with that, those behaviors? Um, I feel like that's already kind of what I'm doing in my day, in my normal daily life. And so I think I want to tweak that even a okay. little further, whereas maybe not every night am I 
having something that's like a sweet or um, a drink or something, you know, like having one or the other or both. <laughs> Do you have an, a number in mind that you can use? Uh, I'd say, um, I don't know, like probably like three nights a week seems like plenty for me to have where it's like the more celebratory type of okay. foods or drinks. <laughs> okay, great. So um, in three months, you'll be during the days eating foods that are going to energize you and help connect you. And then um, three times a week, you're going to embrace the fun, you know, maybe not as normal foods for you to eat um, so that you can have those moments of celebration with your family. Am I understanding that correctly? Uh-huh. Okay. How does that feel? Good. Yeah. Okay. Does it feel doable? It does feel doable. It feels like it'll stretch me, but I think that's good. You know, that, Mm -hmm. um, but I don't feel like I'm restricting myself, if that makes Mm -hmm. sense. Mm -hmm. What do you think are some of the advantages to, to these goals? Mm. Live them out. What would be some advantages? Yeah, I think, um, advantages with the coffee, um, I can already tell that like the amount of caffeine I'm taking in is kind of not feeling good to my body, like the shaky and the like heart (laughs) flutters and stuff. And so Mm -hmm. recognizing that if I want this body (laughs) long-term, that this is a, a clear thing that I need to focus on. Sure. Um, and even just from a financial standpoint, when I go to coffee shops, buying tea is a lot cheaper. So if I can like work my way towards that, um, that would be great. Um, with, with the other one, um, I think just being able to connect with people I don't get to see with, see very often, um, like my family during the holidays or these friends that are planning on visiting, Um, so I want to just like enjoy and soak up all that time. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think too, um, since we are seeing my family for the holidays, I, um, want to be kind of a good leader in that for my Mm -hmm. husband as well. So to make sure like, um, you know, he feels included, but also that he can do the things that fill him up too Mm -hmm. and so I think that takes just that intentionality for me which takes energy (laughs) and um meaning be a good leader do you mean be a good leader by making sure this isn't something that you're doing daily or being a good leader and that you're fostering those connections with him and as well um yeah, being a good leader that I'm fostering the connections with him as well. And um, I think because it is my family and he needs alone time, that Mm -hmm. it will, even though he can tell me when he does need it, I think it actually works better if I say, hey, by the way, get out of here now. This is a good time. And Mm -hmm. so recognizing that Mm -hmm. takes me, because I'm not an introvert, takes Mm -hmm. me a lot more energy and Mm-hmm. concentration I guess in the moment to mm-hmm. be like oh um this is a good time we're not doing anything like really huge and mind-blowing with the family mm-hmm. like <laughs> if you want to take some time away okay um, I, if that I don't know if that's yeah true. so to me it sounds like this benefit of so you describe the advantage for yourself of making the change of only you know kind of having the the celebratory meals three times a week as you had it as a connection with others where the, the, and how do I express this? The limiting it to three times a week, it seemed like there was more of a connection to your husband. So what, what is an advantage for you to, to, to limit it to three times a week? Yeah, I think, um, oh, sorry. No, I said just versus every day. Like what's the advantage three times a week versus every day? Yeah. So, um, Oh, wait, is this for the coffee piece or for the, mm-hmm. the food? Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I think, yeah, for me, um, I'd have the, the energy to 
devote to work that I want to, to um, have the clarity of mind that because we need some creativity in our work um, and for teaching. Um, so to be able to, to put everything I can into the work that I want to do and, mm-hmm. and kind of do it at the caliber that I want to. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, yeah, just feeling good in my body in the sense of like, I'm treating it with the, the care it deserves. Cause it's been a good body, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and so, um, yeah. I want to sustain it and to, it's a, almost, I see it as a way of loving myself well, yeah. of, you know, not only doing the exercise that feels good, but fueling it well. I, I love that you said that. I think that's a really great perspective. Thanks. And motivator and reason to do things, right? Yeah. Um, so you listed some advantages. What do you think are some disadvantages of, say it's three months from now and it's, this doesn't happen. What's happening? Mm disadvantages of these not happening Mm -hmm. um yeah I think just the (laughs) sheer amount of caffeine is just not cool and so I think that would probably just continue to get worse and worse in terms of um kind of how it affects my body or even feeling Mm -hmm. you know like if I don't have it kind of that almost addictive quality piece and not wanting to be addicted to anything, you know, so, Mm -hmm. uh, sure. So that part, um, and I think with a food, I think just, um, a disadvantage would be, I'm, I'm feeling like I'm not being able to bring my full self to everything. Um, I think that's really great. And I think these are really good to start from. And I think from here, if you're okay with it, we can kind of go into more of the specific weekly goals. that can kind of support those three month goals. Is that okay? That sounds great. Okay. So, um, which one would you like to start with? Um, let's do the coffee. Okay. So what do you think could be a few, um, weekly goals to help you support that three month goal? Yeah, I think, um, well, I think talking with um, my husband again about um, incorporating the decaf again and then buying some more <laughs> so we have it in the house. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think because I wanted to kind of kick the caffeine by noon. Mm-hmm. So maybe finding whether I'm either not at the coffee shop or I order like a tea that's far less decaf Mm -hmm. if I'm at the coffee shop in the afternoon, Mm -hmm. morning. So finding a a, a replacement beverage. Yeah. In the afternoon. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, do you want to stick with these three, you think, as kind of these weekly goals? Yeah. Okay. Can... Can we go back and make them smart goals? Yep, <laughs> we can. So let's start with the one about you talking to your husband. Yeah. Um, I mean, I can do that because he'll probably ask me about this. <laughs> and so I can <laughs> do that as early as this evening. Um, okay. And just, you know, it's something he wants to do to you. So I don't foresee that being like a hard conversation. <laughs> Great. I mean, yeah, I think, and that's part of the goal setting, right? Is making sure that we're setting goals that are attainable as well, yeah. right? So, okay. So you're going to talk to your husband today about incorporating more decaf, mm-hmm. but am I clear that you're also going to talk to him about your, your three-month goal? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, how about the buying more decaf in the house? How can you make that a smart goal? Yeah, I think... Um the next time I go to the store, which will probably be, my guess is tomorrow, um, to just add that to the grocery list. Okay. Um, How much decaf are you going to buy? Hmm. One of the, I guess I don't know how many (laughs) ounces it is, but just a regular like coffee package of, of decaf. Okay. 
Because you've had it in the house before, right? If, if yes. It, you just have run out. Yeah. Okay. And we've bought more caffeine. <laughs> so making, if this is a weekly goal, that's a nice thing to have, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then lastly, with the um, replacement beverage, how can you make that into a smart goal? Yeah, I think, um, I think it will help to tell my husband about that one too. Okay. Because again, as I said before, he's a really good resource to okay. um, help with like health things. Um, and then, hmm. yeah, I think almost making it a habit to check what time I'm leaving the house to go to the coffee shop. Like, okay, if it's noon or after, now I know what I'm going to buy. <laughs> okay. okay. So checking the time before you order the beverage? Yeah. I understand. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the next time you're at the coffee shop? Check and see what time it is. Check time before ordering? Yeah. Um, and order a less caffeinated. Mm -hmm. Have you thought through some of what those might look like? I know you mentioned tea, but. That's about all I've thought through. Cause I know that the coffee shop I go to, they have their tea actually sitting right out front in front of the cash register. So I okay. can see it. So I know they have that option. My guess is they probably have a decaf coffee option, but I think. I would like the tea option better if I'm going out. Do you mind if I ask a question about that specifically? Have you, have you asked them how much caffeine is in that tea? No, I haven't. Yeah, that's a good question. M maybe, right? I mean, potentially to see how much is in there. Yeah, absolutely. See if it's even like, is this making a dent <laughs> or not? <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, so um, could you maybe add that to your goal? Yeah, absolutely. Interested in? Okay. So um, the next time you're at the coffee shop, you'll check time of ordering and um, order a less caffeinated beverage by asking the person who works there. Yes. <laughs> caffeine intake. Okay. Um, okay, great. And I want to be mindful of time. We have a few minutes left. So it sounds like we have some really nice weekly goals for the, the caffeine. Um, do you want to move on to weekly goals for the kind of food choices? Sure. Okay. What do you think would be good supportive weekly goals for your three month goal? Mm, let's see. I think again, telling my husband, um, what my plan is when we're traveling in terms of, you know, Hey, I, I want to eat just things that give me energy until dinner time and after, and then, I mean, I could still eat things that give me energy, but <laughs> mm, sure. <laughs> yeah. And when do you want to do that by, uh, tell him, mm -hmm. um, I'll probably, probably tonight too. Cause again, I think I'll recap, a lot of our conversation with him. Okay. Yeah. So that's a, that's a nice kind of weekly goal to help with that. Is there anyone else you would like to have that conversation with or anything else that you think you could do to support that goal? Yeah. Um, my friend, um, Michelle, who also is, is, um, Big on health stuff. She loves talking about this stuff. So I think she'd actually welcome the conversation, which is fun. <laughs> and when will you talk to her about that? Um, I will probably talk to her, I'd say by tomorrow at the latest. Okay. Cool. I really appreciate you taking the time to add the detail to this. I think it's always helpful. Definitely. Right? <laughs> about that big picture. Um, how are you feeling about these smaller goals? I feel good. I feel excited because again, these are kind of some things that I've been mulling around. Mm -hmm. 
So it'll be nice to actually do something about it. Okay. Um, and I feel like they're doable. Again, they're not anything crazy, but you still have to take a step to do it. So sure. Well, there's one last thing I want to do before we kind of wrap up today. And I always like doing this with clients because I think it helps um, sometimes quantify and, and put it into perspective. So have you ever used a confidence ruler, like a one to 10 confidence ruler? Not for myself. Uh -uh. Okay. <laughs> so essentially, um, is it okay that I explain what that is? Absolutely. Okay. So essentially what we do here is that we kind of think about each of our goals and we think, okay, if 10 is, I am 100% confident that I will do this every week. Mm -hmm. One is there's no confidence. There's no way I'm doing this. Where are you kind of on that threshold? So maybe you could pick maybe one of your kind of the caffeine goals that you think is most prevalent to yourself or you think this is the most important that you want to focus on? Yeah. Um, I think the, um, talking to my husband about mm -hmm. kind of um, switching it up here in the home. Okay. Yeah. Oh, and, and the, yeah. Yeah. One to 10 scale. I'd say a nine. I feel good about that. <laughs> okay. Because you feel so strong about that. Do you mind if I ask the same question about buying decaf and putting that into the house? Yeah, that's great. Um, yeah. Again, I'd say a nine just because I, feel ready to do it. I think he'll be on board. So. Okay. That's good. I mean, it sounds like that's a nice one because you also have the support of him. Yeah, definitely. How about finding that replacement beverage when you go to the coffee shop? And I feel a little lower <laughs> just because okay. I don't know um, what they have. And I, this will probably be the first time I've ever ordered a decaf drink at a coffee shop. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so I'd say, seven on that one. Okay. Seven out of 10. Um, what do you think? Why do you think it's not maybe like a five? Why a seven? Uh, I feel pretty confident they'll have something because my mom orders decaf anytime we're together and okay. every coffee shop has had <laughs> something. Okay. <laughs> so even though I haven't ever checked that specifically at this coffee shop, my guess is they'll have something that is lower in caffeine. Wonderful. So through vicarious experiences with your mom, you know that it exists and it can happen. You yeah. just have it yourself, right? Correct. Yeah. I understand. So that explains kind of how you feel a seven out of 10. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, let's do the same thing with your, your weekly goals for food. So on that one to 10 um, confidence kind of scale, how do you feel about talking to your husband about the food piece of it tonight? I'd say, um, I'd say probably like an 8.5. <laughs> right. Um, so why an 8.5? Um, I think that the, with, in comparison to the first thing I'm talking mm -hmm. to him about, that's already been something we've kind of tried mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. um, he's like, he already is on board and understands. And I think this one, I'll have to do a little more explaining okay. and, and stuff like that. And, um, so I think it'll just take a little more time. Okay. Yeah. So it sounds like it's doable. It's just a little bit more effort. Correct. Yeah. Okay. And then how about talking to your friends about your plans for food when you travel? Hmm, I'd say a nine. Okay. Yeah. So strong. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So um, before we move into the wrap up, um, if you're okay with it, I would love for you, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send a follow-up email with this information, but I would love for you to just kind of restate some of your goals. Um, is that okay that you could do that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, for the caffeine goal, um, I'm going to talk to my husband tonight uh, about wanting to incorporate more decaf here at home. And then probably the latest tomorrow, um, go to the grocery store and actually buy the decaf to have at home. And then this week, if I am going to the coffee shop, I'll check what time I'm going in there. And if it's afternoon, then I'll um, ask about like a, a less caffeinated option I can order. Awesome. There's that one. And then the other, um, talking to my husband about um, my eating goals for the holidays. 
um, tonight as well. And um, then talking to um, my friend Michelle about that. Again, I think probably by latest tomorrow too. So I got some stuff yeah. to do in the next two days. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it sounds like they're doable, right? You know, totally. and, and I, you know, I, I appreciate so much about you is your, you do, you have this positive spirit and that clearly guides you, you know, in, in, in your life and including things like this and your, I think your true innate desire to want to connect with people is a really guiding light for all of this because it seems like it's the key piece, right? Agreed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I think that's really, really great. I think that's going to help you achieve these goals. You know, if you kind of always can remember that, that big picture stuff, right? Thanks Kelly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, let's go ahead and start closing this session. I, I really just appreciate you and your time. I know today was a little longer. Um, you know, just a reminder, this is not how it always will be. <laughs> very first session, it's, you know, so important to kind of dig a little bit deeper and, and think about um, where we want to be, how we want to feel, and then breaking that down. Right. Absolutely. Um, I, I learned so much about you and it's so wonderful to hear what you want to do. And that it sounds like you have a really nice, strong plan. Um, do you have any questions or thoughts about today? Mm, no, I just, um, grateful. Cause again, it was really helpful to kind of, um, connect the dots a little bit on mm -hmm. some things. So yeah. I think that just makes it more motivating. So that's awesome. Thank you. Sure. You're very welcome. Well, I will um, send this all kind of in a nice um, wrap up email for you. So you also have it. Um, and if, if you can think of anything that I can do to help support you along the way, um, please, you know, let me know and I'm happy to do that. Um, and as far as our next session, you know, we'll, we'll email each other and figure out when we can do that. Like, it won't, won't be as long as this one, but we can do that um, via email if that's okay with you. Great. Sounds good. Okay. Any other thoughts or questions? Or That's it. Thank you. Hey, you're welcome. 